Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint's Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You for their point, now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. I am Leon Brathwaite, the last word in liberty. I'll be your host today. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on in our society at the present time. I'm coming to you on June 30th, 2021. We are just four days away from our 245th anniversary of the founding of our republic. Before I go any further, let me introduce my panel. In my upper left-hand corner is our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett. Yeah, caught oh, drinking my coffee. Here, my you in my uh, Second Amendment up here. Drinking his coffee with the Second the Amendment. People, Second Amendment. With, yeah, I got caught as the show came on. In our upper right hand corner is our champion of choice, Jason McPhee. He's an engineer with the state of California. So let us get into the topics. Today, since we are so close to Independence Day, 245 years since the Declaration, we will focus this episode on independence and some of the liberty issues that's associated with our independence. When the Declaration of Independence was written, Thomas Jefferson, who was the primary author of the Declaration, wrote these words. We hold this truth to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed with certain unalienable rights, endowed by the Creator with certain unalienable rights, and among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. However, when those words were written, there were some major contradictions ongoing on in society at the time. Number one, women could not vote, and they would not do so for another 150 years. And most of all, most blacks were enslaved. So the question that we have to answer today, is our society broken beyond repair because of those contradictions that existed? Or did our founders leave us with tools and mechanisms to resolve these contradictions? Or is this American experiment a journey of liberty where eventually we will get to that place where life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness can be truly exercised and truly enjoyed by all, by all Americans. Jason, why don't you lead us on this? Well, I, I, I kind of like the way you you uh, phrased that as, as <laughs> a journey of liberty because I think that's that's what you really have to see this in the context of. I, you know, ever since, I, I guess, primitive man first came out, yeah, yeah. ever since... Uh, uh, man, primitive man first came out. I mean, that was, uh, you know, we, we've, we've been, you know, I, I guess uh, let's, let's put it this way. Um, Adam Smith and the wealth of nations didn't, didn't really come along until 1776, which is actually when, you know, we celebrate, uh, you know, our, our independence, you know, uh, yes. and, and that, that should be taken, you know, as something noteworthy that it took us that long to realize that central planning and having one guy decide everything for everybody from the top or some thug with a club, if you go back far enough, I guess, you know, <laughs> you know to caves and such. Uh, either way, it took us that long to realize that we, we were so much, I guess, uh, wealthier as a society if we engage people from the bottom up and let people make choices for themselves. And that the economy does so much better in doing that. And I think that's the roots of, of a lot of what the founding fathers were looking at when, you know, 176 rolled around. Because, uh, you know, uh, you know, Adam Smith was was writing this stuff. He was a moral philosopher. He's considered the founder of modern day economics. And he, I mean, you can bet those guys like, you know, uh, Ben Franklin and others were, were aware of him as they were writing this stuff. Um and, you know, the, the idea that uh, everything wasn't perfect. Well, I mean, you know, the world wasn't perfect at that point, you know, and I mean, it's it's uh, I, I guess it's so uh, don't let perfection be the enemy of, of progress. You know, the idea that, that you have to make a leap to perfection all at one moment just seems kind of uh I, I think Monday morning quarterbacking, I guess, you know, <laughs> yes, we could have done better, but you know, that's what we're trying to do every day. We're trying to do better and we're trying to, uh, you know, get, you know, move towards Liberty. And, and, you know, I think libertarians would definitely say we still have a ways to go, but, uh, uh, it's, it's definitely movement in the, in the right direction. I think this, this, the, the founding fathers were, were definitely, 
uh, one of the best movements we've had towards that liberty. So Tim, so Tim, is it the journey of liberty? Well, are um, we broken? Um, yeah, you, you had three options there. I'm going for the last option right now, probably because I've had my coffee, but I am bipolar about this question. I vacillate day to day, hour to hour between sheer uh, depression um, regarding the future of the country and elation at uh, little little things here and there that give me hope that we have a future that will be the um, th that would indicate the answer was your last answer that that you know we're we're slowly progressing toward liberty as much as it doesn't look like it uh, especially after after the mass mandates and the shutdowns and all that um, but um, <clears throat> so uh, I I think there's there's a, a quandary we took an established institution slavery and women not voting. And we usurped that through um, the process, even though the process included war that killed a significant number of the population. Um, but, uh, okay, so let's apply that to another institution that exists today, and that is the institution of war, constant, never-ending, unconstitutional war. Okay, so if we took our principles of liberty for all and applied it to the women, uh, to women voting and to um, uh, slaves being emancipated, let's apply that same concept with, with, with the Constitution as our guide to this, um, this uh, worldwide dominance of one country, the United States, worldwide, that has carte blanche anywhere they want to go, no matter what they want to do, no matter who they want to kill. And let's apply that and continue the process, uh, even though prior, <laughs> when we first started, well, I guess we, you know, we were too weak, right? So we had to get strong. We had, okay, so all kinds of things happened. The industrial age we, we had uh, massive increases in um, productivity uh, nationwide and in our um, the ability to create wealth, okay, because of the, the, the things that Jason came up with. Now that put us in a position where, hey, let's just, let's just boss everyone in the whole world around it. Uh, the Constitution does not have anything uh, giving us the power to do that. We don't care. We're going to do it. And we have tons of people in the society of the United States making money off of our war making. So let's, <laughs> but let's Tim, apply but Tim, the same same principles. Okay, yeah, I, and I, I, I hear your point, but, but the ability to de declare war is constitutional. Oh, it's, it is. It's in, it's in, oh, it's it in is. one of our founding documents. Oh, for sure, but we're not using it. When did, when was the last time Congress declared war? That went on. <laughs> we're in Afghanistan twenty years. Okay, who who declared war on Afghanistan? Who was it? Congress? No. It was an authorization for the use of military force that had been uh, that that is continuing, even though there's nobody left that that attacked the twin towers there's no one left that supported that attack on the on the uh on the nation that day nobody left yet still the authorization for use of military force 20 years old 60 words one page document as allowing us to go here there anywhere do whatever we want and kill whoever we want Okay, let's let's not get too far off topic. We have a lot of right. we have a lot of ground to cover. So let's let's <laughs> try to keep keep on track here. Right. That, that's all I'm saying is that okay, okay, we killed off two established uh uh whatever I called them before, you know, slavery and women vote. We killed them off with with the constitution, even though they existed before we even came up with this document and the Declaration yes. of Independence. So now that we've <laughs> we've got this document and we've had it, we still have, let's just apply the same principles. That's all I'm saying and stick to the constitution when it comes to bombing people in dark-skinned people in Mideast countries. That's all I'm saying. Fair enough. 
Well, the, the journey of liberty, I think, continued throughout our history, the 245 years to which I'm referring, even though there are some history prior to the 245 years. But that journey of liberty continued. In 1862, Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, which ended slavery in the United States. But it did not totally do the job because it was not until 1865 that um, Gordon Granger, who was a US Army general, announced in the state of Texas that slavery had ended. This was done on the 19th of June, 1865. Thus we have Juneteenth, which is a celebration of the spread of liberty and freedom to our fellow citizens who are black. So Tim, what do you think about this? Is, this, is Juneteenth a good thing, a bad yeah, thing, a political yeah, characteristics yeah. on steroids? Yeah, no, no, I think, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so. I, I think it's historic. I think it's a, a good uh, day to celebrate. I doubt that I'll be getting that day off, but that's okay. I mean, I don't get a lot of days off, okay? I don't get, I don't get President's Day off either, which is probably a good thing because I don't worship those guys anyway. But uh, <laughs> anyway, but hey, if the federal government takes the day off, that means there's less time for people. I'm, I'm being kind of silly here, but uh, there's less time for people to make laws that are uh, telling me to do something I don't want to do or not do something I do want to do. So I like them taking a day off. I think they ought to take the whole week off, actually. Uh, <laughs> But, but uh, seriously, um, yeah, no, that, that's that's fine with me. I think we'll we'll do just fine with you know governments taking it off, and if employers want to give their employees the day off to celebrate a really important holiday, that's great. On I might you know well I probably won't get the day off, but if I did, I'd fly the flag, or if it was the day I was off, I'd fly the flag on Juneteenth because it's a great American holiday, uh, uh, in my opinion. Jason? Yeah, I, I think uh, that the idea of having a holiday around liberty is actually a, a good, uh, you know, idea. And the idea of, you know, that June 19th is, is when, you know, the slaves, the final slaves realized they were free. Um, <clears throat> you know, certainly that could be uh, that could be the day, you know, whether it be the date that Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation or, or whatever, um, you know, whatever, whatever day. I think it's Texas had already made this a holiday uh, in the past. So, yes, it uh, did. so it kind of, you know, <laughs> it made that the the uh, home favorite for <laughs> just being the <laughs> being the date. But to me, the only thing I guess I would just caution is that I would hope that the the focus of the holiday is on liberty you know and the idea that it's a celebration of human freedom and not a celebration of or or uh, i guess a chance to to bring up division you know which is i think certainly the motives of some people who you know in this country right now who appear to be trying to find every effort they can to to see more division but certainly the idea that you know, this was a big step for liberty in this country. I, I you know, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with, you know, having a holiday for that. But, um, you know, then again, I, I also think, too, that it's kind of funny that we have to wait for the government to tell us this is a day that we have to celebrate. I mean, the idea of just, you know, oh, you know, well, Nancy Pelosi said we can celebrate today. So I uh, guess that's we're a good all point. good with celebrating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good point, Jason. Uh, just, just to add, I mean, in addition to liberty, I mean, something I read, and correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, historically, when the, the uh, slaves realized that they were free, there was... Um, a, uh, a, a, a general and uh, prevalent um, urge to reunite families that had been divided by slavery. Yes. It, it, okay. So that's, that's true. And that it, that's, is very true. That is very true, actually. Yeah. So in addition to celebration of liberty, it's a celebration, Juneteenth is a celebration of family because what do people do when families are torn asunder by um, 
by the, the, the lunacy and, and the crime of slavery is they try to get back together with their family members. And that's, that's an important tradition, human, it's, I, I was going to say American tradition, but it's a human tradition to be, to be uh, associated with family. And it's important. And so there you have it. Very good, guys. Good, good points. Good points all around. So the next, the, the next topic we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll jump on to is about oh, a tax. Hey, on... hey, be, before we leave this, Leon, what do you think of June nineteenth? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what, what is you think you think my 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 opinion is more important than your guys your guys's? No, no you're, but you're it's just... equally important. Exactly. <laughs> 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 well, I like I like what um what the president of the heritage um what the heritage foundation said, and I linked I linked the article, and she said that essentially I'm not I don't have a direct quote. She said that this is a great celebration of freedom and liberty, and I think that that's what it is. That the Emancipation Proclamation and 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 which was a great document as far as I'm concerned. In terms of liberty in the United States, I I I think Juneteenth was just a continuation of that, and um, so I think it was a wonderful thing, and, and I, I I think we should we should celebrate it. But Jason, I think you're correct. You're you're very correct, and it's it's one of my fears about Juneteenth, in the sense that it will become a holiday more of division rather than a celebration of liberty, and I I want it to remain as a celebration of liberty. I really do. Okay, could, it, could I, can I go on now? Could we go on? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me let, let, looking at the time here. Let, let, let's let's jump around. There were I was going. I did include some uh, people who fought for liberty and who were seeking liberty. Um, the runaway slave was was is a very good typical example of that. Um, Cassius Clay, not the not the famous boxer, was a man who fought for liberty, even though he came from a slave owning family. But I don't think we have time to talk, go deep into into um, into discussion of uh, of any of these men or some of the people who did fight for liberty and actually put their life on the line for liberty, uh, even though there are things that we probably should discuss. But let's talk a little bit about uh, attacks on liberty. One of the things that is Juneteenth have now produced is a is a politicization of 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 the, the celebration in Evanston, Illinois. They have canceled all gatherings because of the COVID. That's that's what they said. And they have also canceled any July 4th, which is our Independence Day, any July 4th gatherings or celebration. However, they are permitting Juneteenth uh, celebrations and they are permitting pride celebrations for the LGBTQ community. I find that problematic, and this probably gets back to that issue you raised, Jason, about divisions. So what do you guys think about this? Well, I have a question, first of all. Is is it a democratically controlled city? I I do not know that for certain, but I if I am a betting man, I would bet yes. You mean yeah. Team Blue I, City. <laughs> <laughs> Team Blue. Yeah, I bet it is, too. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, June Juneteenth has passed, and but they were complaining they didn't have enough time to get the permits ready for the fireworks and and so on. Well, okay, yeah, you can't have fireworks then because you got your stupid permit process to go. <laughs> it's like, okay, go ahead and just say, you know, we're not going to have fireworks, but you can do whatever else you want. You can have your sparklers and you know so on, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, just but to just say, oh no, no, we can't have that, but we we can have these other things, no problem. Not worried about being a super spreader event at the the poor, uh, you know, the the poor unfortunate gay community that is um, that is going to uh, you know spread the disease amongst themselves uh, be willy nilly because we don't care about them, but. Oh my goodness, we can't celebrate the 4th of July. Seriously. I mean, you know, that's essentially what they're saying. So stop. And you're idiots. So stop this and just allow the 4th of July. Jason. Well, you know, I, I, I think uh, it's the ultimate irony 
uh, that, you know, we have government, uh, I guess, oppressing us on, <laughs> on the day when we're supposed to be celebrating our, <laughs> our liberation from oppressive yeah. government. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. But, but yeah. Know. Drips with irony, does it not? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like that constitution cup you had. <laughs> yes. There it is. Right there. The people. <laughs> Yeah, but, 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 you know, that brings it back to what we were talking about at the beginning. And I mean, I, I think that the founding fathers, they set an incredible framework for us to to uh, to have a journey toward liberty. But just because we've got that framework doesn't actually mean that there aren't going to be a lot of forces trying to derail us. And I mean, I, I think if nothing else, this last year should have taught us that with COVID, the idea that that so many people on both Team Red and Team Blue literally we're, we're absolutely okay with throwing out individual liberty uh, for safety. Uh, it was not even a, a, a discussion at the beginning. And, right. uh, you know, everybody was afraid and people on both sides, it was certainly more on Team Blue, but I mean, there, was, there wasn't much resistance from, from Trump in the beginning or many Republicans uh, to shutting things down and just taking away people's uh, freedom of association right off the bat. And um, we, we've, got a lot of scary uh, precedents that this has set and uh, where we're going in the future with this. And, and of course, you know, people who are always pushing for the spread of government, uh, there's always an incentive for that. And so it really behooves us to, to try and, and I guess, keep that value for liberty and try and spread it to the people we know. Because, I mean, there's a, so many more people out there who are comfortable just asking for stuff from government and Indeed. asking for government to take care of them and at the expense of all of our liberty. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I want to touch real quick. We, we, we run out of time here, but I want to touch real quick on the case of the McCloskeys in, um, of St. Louis. During the summer riots, some BLM, Black Lives Matter protesters broke down the gate, the private gate, and got onto the private property of the McCloskeys in in, uh, in St. Louis. The McCloskeys retrieved their guns and drove them off. However, they were charged. They were charged with felonies. They recently, they recently accepted a plea where they will be convicted, uh, they'll be convicted of misdemeanors and they'll have to give up the two weapons that they use in defending themselves and defending their property. So the question then is protecting state in their property the systems going uh i it, you froze there uh oh. right at your question yeah Leon. i okay i said is is protecting your property a crime in the united states and since this involved guns tim please go ahead well um usually it is uh yes i mean you, you cannot uh you know somebody can jump into my car and take off with it and i cannot run out after them and start shooting at them no, I can't do that. I, in fact, I could be, uh, they could be coming, they could uh, come into my house. If I had the door open, for example, they didn't break in. They, they, they come over and said, I just want your TV set and started carting it out the door. And I, you know, I don't mean you any harm, uh, uh, Mr. Homeowner. I'm just taking your television set. Okay. I have insurance for that. I can replace the TV set, but I can't shoot somebody over that. So no. But property uh, rights uh, do not trump the life of somebody, even the criminal that's trying to steal your property in most states uh, of the United States. So, um, so, so that would be a solid, easy, easily understood no. Uh, Texas has a little bit more leniency there and does allow at least that one state for, for sure does allow um, defending your, your property. And, okay, let me uh, give, let's give Jason a chance to, to comment yeah. real quick. Jason, please, quickly. Well, the only quick shot I would take is that these, these may be the laws in these places, but as far as what's correct for liberty, I, th I think people do have the right to, to stand in front of their property. I mean, in the end, your self-ownership of you is the most fundamental private property right that you have, and and our labor and the things that we acquire with that is... is uh, just an extension of that. And, you know, if the state was able to just take all of your goods from you and essentially make you a slave, which is what we've been talking about also today, that, you know, at the end, it's, it's not just property. <laughs> in the end, that's, that's your labor and that's your, 
So, so at some point you do have the right to stand up and defend yourself if, if you think you're threatened. But, um, you know, with the McCloskeys, uh, it, it's, you know, it, people were, I, I, it's hard to say how fearful you should have been if you weren't there, I guess, because, uh, you know. Well, I, yeah, yeah, I mean, those, Leon asked if you can defend property. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I answered that question the best I know. Um, you know, can, can you stand in front of your house to a mob uh, and brandish weapons, um, I, I would say that there might be better tactical methods of defending yourself, but you you certainly should be able to do that. Um, so I don't see any issue other than the fact that they were pointing the weapons at kind of themselves and the crowd and everybody else. So, you know, I kind of find that problematic. Um, but you can, you know, certainly... Um, and again, you know, we're not talking tactics here. Um, you can certainly do that. And it doesn't put you in a good light if there is a self-defense shooting, by the way. But, um, but, you, but the you question can do still it. remains, though, Tim, and, and, and this is mm -hmm. where I think I'm, I'm going to align here with Jason, is that if, if, if someone walks into my home uninvited or somebody walks onto my property uninvited, mm -hmm. why the hell I can't shoot them? Well, because they ha because there has to be f five um, prerequisites for self-defense to be a, uh, an excuse for a homicide. So you're talking about, um, a homicide there. Yes. I'm assuming, or a potential homicide. In other words, you, if you shoot somebody, you got a good chance of killing them. Okay. So, but there, but just because they're in your house, uh, and I can give you a, an example, that's just perfect. Um, it, let me do it real quick. Neighbor boy is about 19 or 20 years old, uh, lived at home, mentally deficient, walked his house, went over to a neighbor's house that looked the same, same neighborhood, tracked homes, went inside the homeowner, a, um, an, uh, I think he was an instructor for a, a self-defense instructor, pulled his uh, nine millimeter and yelled at him to get out of the house. The kid stood there just dumbfounded is everything looked different and who's this guy yelling at me i'm supposed to be in my house he he turned around walked outside of the house and here comes his father pulling up in a car going oh my god and it turns out okay this is the neighbor boy and and he got out okay and, and he wasn't supposed to and he, he's a full-grown man and you know so the, the guy held back did not shoot okay so there, there's a perfect example. You have to have somebody that's trying, that has the means and is trying to kill you. So in other words, some, some little five foot tall, skinny chick that's crazy and, and has no weapon is, is one thing. Maybe you don't need to shoot her, but you know, you see what I'm saying? There's all kinds of variables. You need five things and I can't think of them off the top of my head, but okay. they all entail your life is in uh, is threatened. Unfortunately, Tim, we have to leave it yep. right there. We have yes, reached we the end of our show. Happy Independence wow, Day. <laughs> yes, it came fast. Fast. yes. Happy Independence Day to all. Remember, yes. life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That is our goal. Stay free. Thank <laughs> you for being too. here. <laughs>